first. We have to start with the rival division game in the NFL yesterday. The L.A. Rams and the Seattle Seahawks. The Rams silenced the Seahawks 20-10 to yesterday at SoFi Stadium and are now tied atop the NFC West with the Arizona Cardinals at 10 and Four, both of those teams with a 10 and four record. Let me first just say, because I went to the game last night. If you haven't been to SoFi Stadium, it is more impressive in person than it already is when it jumps off the television screen. The sheer magnitude and size of SoFi Stadium is incredible. It's gorgeous. There's a huge pond in the middle. It's almost like a, a man made lake just surrounding about half of SoFi Stadium, and it's got kind of a theme park atmosphere to it, not only with the space, but with the amenities, and the grounds are beautiful. They really did a fantastic, a fantastic job with the entire complex, $5 billion complex. It certainly showed out, I will say that. But when it comes to the game, this was a really impressive win for the Rams. This was a really impressive win for the Rams for a bevy of reasons. They obviously were, were going through a turbulent week in which they had 29 guys over 10 days ago on the NFL's health and safety protocols COVID list. They had 29 guys now return from that incident, from that stretch of time in which they had to travel to Arizona. They won on they won on the road. Then they came back and they faced the Seattle Seahawks team at home again, where they couldn't even practice with over 11 key starters from the team, 29 players. So when you factor in all that context, it was extremely impressive. Now, I will say this when I first, when I first initially left SoFi Stadium, I felt a little underwhelmed, felt a little disappointed in the Rams because the first half was kind of this defensive chess match. Neither side could string together really crisp drives, execute really cleanly. Matthew Stafford had a bizarrely bad interception in the Seahawks' half of the field. The Rams left three points on the board when they opted to go for it on fourth and two. So it was 3-3 at the half. But there weren't many sustained long drives from either side. It was really a defensive outing. But then I thought about it a little bit more, and it dawned on me, especially after the second half, that you know what? No, this is actually a pretty impressive win. Because when you think about the desperation level of the Seattle Seahawks and the fact that this is a division rival, a divisional game against a team that was playing for their season, the Seattle Seahawks, though mathematically aren't eliminated out of the playoff picture. Last night was huge for their hopes of of reaching the postseason. Now they're two games back of the potential seventh and final playoff wildcard spot. So they were playing like a team desperate. Russell Wilson was back. Obviously, he missed the first go round in which the Rams won 26 to 17. He came back the second go round. And to the credit of the Rams defense, they did a great job bottling him up and, and containing him. He really did not play well. I'm not sure if he was hurt, but it didn't look like he was hurt. But the Rams just did a nice job not letting him get outside the pocket and do damage with his legs, which is something that he's prone to do, that he can do, and do at a very high level. They did a nice job keeping him inside the pocket, pressuring him up the middle, and they were just owning the line of scrimmage throughout the, throughout the entirety of of the game. I mean, again, they only gave up 10 points. And with the exception of one drive in which the Seahawks were able to establish a little bit of a run game, they went all the way up the field and scored down the field and scored outside of one drive. 10 points, that's it. That's all the defense conceded. And what you saw was from a defensive standpoint, their front three were really able to be impact players. They were able to set the tone. Those are their anchors defensively up front. In Aaron Donald, Von Miller, Leonard Floyd, each of them recorded a sack. In fact, for Von Miller, it was his first ever sack 
as a Ram. That's what was impressive about this. And, and again, then the second half just inherently was more entertaining because you combine that uh, that defensive prowess with the offense starting to rev up. And they, were start, and they were starting to play a lot better. Matthew Stafford was a little bit sharper. Sony Michelle was running the football the best that I've ever seen him. That trade has certainly looked good from last offseason with the New England Patriots. Had 92 rushing yards, but they were impactful, tough rushing yards that he was able to, to accrue. And then I think I've run out of enough superlatives to talk about Cooper Cup. I mean, the guy is just phenomenal. And the interesting thing about Cooper Cup is he's not just a really intelligent player. So obviously, he's a great athlete. He can make tremendous catches. But to me, what's extremely impressive about him, along with his ability to route run at an elite level, is his spatial awareness and his positioning when it comes to 50-50 balls is second to none because there are some throws that I saw Matthew Stafford didn't necessarily put it right on the money, but Cooper's ability to adjust mid flight and change the body angle, change his positioning to get himself in better position to make these catches is what's extremely impressive about him. He's not just someone where if you're in the right step and the ball is thrown in your direction that in stride, you can make the catch. He can do that too. But even if the ball is thrown behind him or, it's a little bit too far in front. He has a, a great feel for the game and an ability to change his body positioning and positions to make catches on the ball. And it's just so impressive. Nine catches, 136 yards, two touchdowns. He was tremendous. He has just been tremendous all season. He really is just a sensational, sensational wide receiver who doesn't get enough credit. I'll talk about this a little bit in my Malkins moments, but he also just became the, the Rams franchise leader for the most receptions in Rams history, along with a single season. The guy's just been absolutely sensational. And again, you combine the fact that OBJ is now starting to get more comfortable within the offensive system. And Matthew Stafford is developing rapport with him. He has a better understanding of where he sits along the pegs, juxtapose Cooper Cup next to them. Sony Michelle's getting it going. As I mentioned, the Rams, three sacks on Russ, an interception. So they're starting to put these pieces together. They're starting to put these pieces together. And what's, again, most important is that they're trending in the right direction at the right time of the year. They're starting to hit their stride at the right time of the year. They just can't let their guard down. They still have a difficult schedule remaining at the Minnesota Vikings, at the Baltimore Ravens, and then at home versus the 49ers. So there's still plenty of football left to be played. But this was a major, major victory against a more than capable Seattle Seahawks team of coming into SoFi and collecting a big road win. And the Rams said, nope, they were down 10 to 3. They rattled off 17 straight points to close it out. And that was all she wrote. That was all she wrote. So they're getting healthy. Knock on wood, they haven't sustained injuries to key players. And guys are returning off the COVID list. So they're trending in the right direction.